This is a full guide on how to operate, interpret, and measure electrical waveforms using an oscilloscope. So we're gonna start with a quick intro, then we're gonna understand the key specs. After that, we're gonna master using the display controls so that we can start seeing our first signal clearly, which we're then gonna dissect by using the measurement tools. Then we're gonna learn the calibration and settings. And finally, we're gonna go through the essential safety and best practices. All right, let's go. Firstly, this is an oscilloscope. It's a DSOX1204A by Keysight, and it's a pretty standard scope. It's basically an electronic graphing machine, and instead of measuring voltage with a simple number like a multimeter, it plots the voltage over time, which lets you see things like frequency, amplitude, noise, distortion, and glitches. Stuff that a multimeter would completely miss. The horizontal axis represents time, and the vertical axis represents voltage. So when you connect the signal, you see a waveform moving across the screen in real time. Sick! Also, I just dropped the Robotics Academy. It's an online community for people who want to learn new skills and build epic projects. There's online video courses, a forum to ask questions, and weekly design reviews. Click the first link in the description to join for free. There are two types of oscilloscopes, analog and digital. Analog oscilloscopes are the old school type. They use a cathode ray tube to physically draw waveforms on a screen. Pretty cool, but outdated and kind of bulky. Digital oscilloscopes are way more powerful with a bunch of functions. For 99% of people, a digital oscilloscope is the way to go. In a scope, the most important stat is the bandwidth. It determines how fast you can measure signals. And think of it like your internet speed. If you have a low bandwidth oscilloscope, you're gonna miss a lot of details in fast signals. Just like a slow internet speed makes all your videos pixelated and laggy. A general rule is your oscilloscope bandwidth should be at least five times higher than the highest frequency that you wanna measure. Next is the sampling rate, which is kind of the camera FPS of oscilloscopes. Oscilloscopes don't measure signals continuously. Instead, they take tiny snapshots at really high speed. The sampling rate tells you how many snapshots it takes a second. And just like with the bandwidth, there's a rule of thumb. Your sampling rate should be at least five times higher than your signal frequency. Think of it like taking a slow motion video. If the frame rate is too low, the motion will look all choppy. But if the frame rate is high, you get smooth, clean detail. Next is the number of channels. Each channel lets you measure a signal. So more channels mean more signals you can measure at the same time. And with that, you're ready to start measuring signals. So let's go. This is an ESP32, and I've programmed it to generate a sine wave on pin 25. To connect this circuit to our scope, we use a probe, which has a tip on one side and a connector on the other side. You also need the ground clip, which you insert into the side of the probe. All right, so connect the probe to the oscilloscope by pushing it in and twisting it to lock it. Then connect the probe ground clip to the ESP32 ground and touch the oscilloscope probe tip to pin 25. Now you should see it displaying something. It might not really make sense. And that's okay. We can use the controls to get a clear signal. But first, I don't wanna be holding this tip to the pin all the time. So I'm gonna use an attachment to just clip it on like that. All right, now let's get a sexy looking waveform. First, adjust the vertical scale and position. If the sine wave looks too big and clips off the screen, or if it looks too small and you can't really see what's happening, adjust the vertical scale by turning the big knob labeled vertical. And adjusting the vertical position by turning the little knob labeled vertical. You should have the waveform taking up as much space as it can. Next thing is this waveform is jumping around like crazy. That's because the scope doesn't know when to start drawing the wave. What we can do is set a trigger to tell the scope to start drawing that waveform at a specified voltage. So click trigger and make sure the trigger mode is edge triggering and adjust the trigger level, which is the line labeled T by using the trigger knob. And as I move it up and down, it adjusts where the waveform starts. Now, the sine wave should stay on screen instead of jumping around. But the only thing is that this looks like a line, not a sine wave. So let's adjust the horizontal scale. If the sine wave looks stretched out or too compressed, adjust the horizontal scale by turning the big knob labeled horizontal you can also offset the wave by turning the little knob cool and that's a sine wave also if you're cool like me your scope will have an auto scale button this does the whole process that we described in just one button you know what that is that's noise from random stuff even my body can induce noise into a circuit on a breadboard all the floating wires can also cause noise and it's also just unreliable which is why i love designing pcbs and you already know where I get these manufactured. JLC PCB. 
After you finish designing your circuit, you just drag and drop it into their website and it uploads easy like that. Their stuff is mega affordable too. It's literally two bucks for five PCBs, which is pretty freaking nuts, man. And it only takes about two days for them to make the PCB and then a week to ship to Australia or two weeks if you choose the cheaper shipping offer. Anyways, they're also offering a bunch of limited time coupons for people who sign up today. So click the first link in the description to join for free and claim all these coupons. Now that the waveform is stable, let's analyze it using the oscilloscope's built-in measurement tools. First, let's measure the peak-to-peak -peak voltage, so hit MEJ, type, and using main control knob with the entry label to change the type to peak-to-peak -peak voltage, and then press the knob to select, and then hit add measurement. Now you'll see the peak-to-peak -peak voltage being displayed on the bottom here. Now let's do the same with frequency, and RMS voltage, and if you want to save what you're seeing, you can check a USB in the scope, hit save recall, and then hit save. And that's pretty much all the basics you need to know. Of course, the rabbit hole goes a lot deeper with a bunch of functions, but that's for later. Now that you know how to use an oscilloscope, let's talk about how to use it correctly. Because just seeing a waveform doesn't mean it's accurate. And if you're not careful, you could damage your oscilloscope or even yourself. Here's everything you need to know to get clean, accurate measurements while avoiding costly mistakes. First thing is you want to calibrate your probe. Before you do anything, you must compensate your probe, otherwise your readings could be completely wrong. So connect the probe to the oscilloscope's built-in test signal, then attach the probe ground clip to the oscilloscope ground, and then check the waveform. If it looks like a nice clean square wave, you're good. If the edges are rounded or slanted, adjust the small screw on the probe until the wave looks correct. Do this every time you switch probes or use a new oscilloscope. Next, you want to use the right probe settings. So your oscilloscope probe actually has two settings, so there's 1x and 10x. 1x mode gives you direct signal measurement but reduces your bandwidth and can mess with your circuit. 10x mode reduces the loading effects on the circuit and gives you the full bandwidth of your oscilloscope. So use 10x mode for most measurements and make sure that the oscilloscope is also set to 10x. After that, you want to make sure to avoid ground loops. Always connect the ground probe clip to the same ground as your circuit. And avoid connecting multiple ground clips in different parts of your circuit. After that, you want to be careful of high voltages. Oscilloscopes do not like high voltages. And if you exceed the voltage rating, you could permanently damage the input circuits. If you're measuring AC mains voltage, never connect your oscilloscope directly. Use a high voltage differential probe. If you look closely, most oscilloscopes will have a max input and exceeding this can kill your scope. And if you're working with inductive loads such as motors and relays, use protection diodes to prevent against voltage spikes. And the number one thing that you should not do is connect the oscilloscope ground clip to mains power. Because oscilloscope grounds are tied to mains earth. If you connect your probe ground to live mains voltage, you short it directly to earth, which could destroy your oscilloscope, trip the circuit breaker, and possibly even shock you. So, use a differential probe for mains power measurements. And with that said, you now know what oscilloscopes are, what the specifications mean, how to use the display controls, how to use the measurement tools, how to calibrate the probe, and the essential safety and best practices. Cool!